<laughs> so my story is one of that. Uh, my background before Islam was Christianity. I grew up in South London. I grew up um, as a young black male in the, you know, in in the suburbs. I had a lot of ups and downs with gangs, um, making money, and also the music lifestyle. The main uh, point of me becoming a Muslim or that main urge of looking for something better was that prior to Islam there's this trying to um, adapt with society, we're trying to attain the riches, we're trying to fit in, we're not trying to be outcasts, we're trying to fit in with our peers and we're trying to deal with peer, peer pressure growing up in the communities that we happen, we happen to live in. My community was one of um, people that had a lot of glitter. Um, the young boys had a lot of money, they had a lot of wealth in terms of what we saw, they had success. So they had things that many of us we would look at and we wanted to attain. And at that age, the only way to attain something like this was really to find a way to do it yourself, which led me into the criminal lifestyle or the criminal activities of finding a quick buck or trying to find a, a way to get out of it. Within this lifestyle, many of us, we don't agree with it and our hearts yearns for something better, but we carry on conforming to society because of the music, the films, the pressure that we get, also our families. Because we have families, our mothers and fathers, we seem to think that they should know what life's about and they should have a better understanding. But we seem to find that many of our families themselves are just following a, foot, a footpath of what was led to them by their own families, their own mothers and fathers. And that they're as lost as we are in this society that we live in today with so much pressure to acquire stuff for your children and to give them the best education and them themselves not knowing what is the best education and what is best for my child and for them to have that lifestyle that they deem to be success. So in my journey I got into a lot of street fights, I lost a lot of friends to the streets. I grew up in an area of Wharf Road, Peckham. I was somebody that couldn't walk into Brixton and other people that I had problems with couldn't walk into my area. I had a lot of I remember once, the first time I came into Brixton was when Foot Locker first opened up. There wasn't a lot of them. I was in Foot Locker to buy some trainers with a couple of friends from Peckham. Within the first 10 minutes, there was around, there was 20 guys outside and the telephone call had already been made that we had entered into the Brixton locality. So from then, I got into a big fight. Police came, um, two of my friends were stabbed. We managed to get out safe and alive, but through, through these, occasions of not being able to walk freely into areas and live my life how I felt should I should. I always had this search and this yearning for something more and something that I thought that there was more to life than. It never really occurred to me until I think one of the elders in my community at the age of 21 was shot dead outside the nightclub in West End and after hearing this because he was somebody that we looked up to, he had the BMW, he had the the motorbikes, he had the cars, the clothes, the girls, everything. And we looked up to him and thought and saw him as somebody that was elder in the community or older than us. He was only 21, 22 years old. We were 16, 17 at the time. But now looking back at it, me being 29 myself, I realised that he was a young male and lost his life to nothing at such a young age. But this was a turning point to me that I started to think about how my life would be and what I was, what road I was heading up to. My conversion took place in prison when um, I was arrested for an offensive weapon that was a knife at the time because I felt like I couldn't travel wherever I wanted to go without having something to protect myself. So I ended up in prison spending eight months in there for this and I met two um, Asian boys, their name was Hassan and Hussein. We, we had uh, a sit-in, we spoke about some issues and at the time it was Ramadan so they were fasting. I saw how they practiced their religion. They had some good words to say to me and prior, prior to this um, my mother had the Qur'an and she, it was given to her by a female relative and she wanted to get rid of it but she, she saw it to be as a holy book so she said she didn't want to throw it away in the bin or anything like that so she said I should look after it. I read it, read some parts of it, never meant much to me at the time until I was in prison and because I had that f familiarity with it that I had it prior I thought let me have a look. I read it. Um, cut a long story short, 
Islam was something that made sense to me and I saw its and I saw the truth from the falsehood within its writings. But I had that peer pressure in that I didn't want to accept Islam. Reason being is that most of my enemies at the time were Muslims. They were people that I didn't really like and they didn't like me. And our main differences was that they had Islam and that's what they were at the time. So I felt to myself, if I was to become Muslim, come out of prison, what am I going to tell my friends when they hear that now I'm Muslim and I share something with our enemies? So I had a lot of peer pressure at the time. But the two Asian boys, they said something to me that will stick, to, that will stick with me till today. They said, look, I'm going to offer you something and if you don't like it, then give it back. It's not yours to keep unless you want to keep it. So I said, what's this? They said, it's Islam, it's simple. We're going to offer it to you, taste it. If you don't like it within, by the time you leave this prison, which was two months, then give it back and leave how you came. So I said, that's fair enough. So I entered into Islam. And within that month of Ramadan, I started to practice the religion. I read some more and I felt a tranquility and a calmness that I'd never felt before. And that peer pressure that I had of telling my friends was lifted from me. And another blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to me was that I had a close friend prior to, prior to my conversion to Islam that was somebody that we traveled a lot together and we grew up together in the same neighborhood. And he was the first person that I wanted to tell him my conversion to Islam. So as soon as I came out, I rang him and I told him, look, I've got something to tell you. Don't take it the wrong way because of what's been going on prior to that. And he was like, no, i got something to tell you. And I was like, no, nah, let me speak. And he said, no, nah, I'm Muslim. So he just spelled it out quickly. And I said, what do you mean you're Muslim? He's like, no, nah, I took my shahada recently. I've had enough of this lifestyle. And I was like, that's what I wanted to tell you. And he was like, all right, cool. So it became easier for us to go back into our community speak to our peers because I was rapping with a group at the time called OTBS Fair No One and I was rapping with people like Giggs, Ghetto and some brother together and our music was getting out there at the time so there was also a lot of peer pressure and I was thinking that for the last five years I've been rapping and I've been trying to build myself to get to a certain level and as soon as I took Shahada that level started to approach and that we started to get recognition for the music that we were doing. So I had a choice to make between Islam and staying doing the music. Well, I left that alone anyway, and I and cut a long story short, started to practice my religion. I left off my friends. The first thing I'd done, I just, I just packed my bags, done a getaway, bought a ticket. I had some money at the time. I had a lot of money at the time. I bought a ticket, went to Egypt. I spent two months out there. It was like a detox to get um, to get a lot of the things out of my system and to just take a good look at myself in the mirror and to ask myself what I wanted in life. I came back and ever since then my life has changed. How I can say Islam has changed my life and how it's bettered me is that it's allowed me to, to, have, a, to have a better understanding of what a man is, what a father is <coughs> and what a husband is and also, you know, what a mother is, what a wife is, what a daughter is, and to appreciate people in their natural form and to see people for who they are and not to see them for postcodes or, or to automatically have some sort of understanding or some sort of, you know, thought of what, uh, what people are and to judge people for um, clearly what they bring to you and what they present to you. Because Islam was something that I had a lot of judgment to prior before accepting Islam. I never thought I'll be a Muslim at the time. I never thought that I would have, even I would say a month before becoming Muslim, I never thought I'd be Muslim at the time. I went into a tattoo parlor and I got a tattoo of a cross and I was like, look, never would I ever accept Islam. I'm gonna make it clear by putting this tattoo on my arm and, and this is how I'm gonna live my life. And little did I know that within the space of a month of getting that tattoo, I would have accepted the religion of Islam, and that was the path that I would have been in. And that's my short story, cut short.